Hello, everyone. It's nice to be here again. One and again. Uh, so this talk is going to be about Epiphany, or web. Let's just call it web. Um, my name is Claudio. You probably know me. If you don't, well, I've been working in NOM for like eight years now, or maybe a bit more. I work for Italia. We do web stuff. And uh, contrary to, my, to what the press says sometimes outrageously, I'm not Garnacho. So, <laughs> um, so yeah, wh why are we here in the first place? Why, why, why to make a talk about Epiphany? Why to, make, why to talk about web? Um, so you, as you know, web is the browser we have in GNOME. It's a project that started a very long time ago. It came from this uh, Galeon browser. It has evolved a lot, and it has always been uh, sort of a secondary actor in the whole web world because, well, the other the alternative browsers or the mainstream browsers are, are usually having much larger uh, manpower, so to say. Um, but anyway, so we, we, we tried to always, or at least for the last year, we've been trying to find a way to, to, to make uh, web have sense in the context of GNOME. And that's how we have this motto, which is we have to integrate in the desktop as good as we can. And that's what we have to do, and that's our goal. And that's the only thing that we can give people, or one of the main things that we can give users that uh, neither Firefox or Chrome can do. Maybe because they don't care, but we care, and I know some of our users care, and they appreciate this, and that's what we do. Um, yeah, I just came, came up with that yesterday. But uh, nonetheless, I think this defines in, in, in one line what we have been doing and what we want to do in the future. So, um, so where do we stand right now? And this is a bit of a status update with regards to last year, same, ar ar around the same time. Um, one of the really cool things that, that we've been, what is the stages? Okay, one of the cool things that we have, and I think that it was really nice that we did this or started working on this a couple of years ago, is this web application concept, which it would let you like sandbox a web page and run it as a dedicated application inside the desktop and not to have to worry about uh, whether this is going to uh, affect somehow your browser or whether it's going to mix your cookies with browser cookies. and. Uh, the really neat thing is that as, as the web has been evolving and it has been getting more and more complex, more and more applications or more and more, more web applications in the internet have been moving in a direction in which this makes full sense. And this is, for example, uh, I don't know if you have tried Spotify web, web uh, application. It's, it's really neat. It's, it's mostly HTML5 and JavaScript. And, and if you run it as a web application, it's, it's, it's really cool. I think it, this is killer. Um, yeah, so what else do we have that's new? We have, you probably saw it, it's this, uh, we call it the overview. It's some kind of start page where you get the pages that you use more often. And I think I'm going to kill myself here. Um, yeah, so right now it's, 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 it's written using GTK, and it's reusing some of the stuff that you can find in, in documents. Uh, it's, it's not so clever as we would like. I'll talk later about some of the ideas we have, but, but for the time being, I think it's, it's a huge improvement in usability. Um, yeah, one of the coolest features we have since uh, the last release is this WebKit 2 engine, which is powering the browser. And uh, it is cool because it has a lot of changes in the architecture that make it really, really modern, and it comp makes web uh, comparable to Chrome or uh, Safari as browsers. Uh, some of the things that WebKit2 brings are, well, multi-process architecture, which means that the web content is being worked on in one process while the, your UI is running a different one. Uh, also, plugins are running in a different one, and this has a lot of advantages. For example, you've probably seen this guy a couple of times by now, if you use web. Uh, now, usually the, the, one of the most common reasons why a browser crashes is because of the content, uh, not being able to deal with the content or somehow uh, bugs in, in the JavaScript engine. So with this uh, multi-process architecture, we are not crashing your browser that much anymore. Uh, 
when the content crashes the web process, the web process tells the, U, the UI process that there has been a crash, and then we try to handle it as, as neat as possible. And you can just reload the page and continue from there. Uh, yeah, because we moved so much stuff outside the UI process, the UI is much more responsive, and that you can notice. And I think I've been reading a lot of feedback from users in, in Twitter and in the social media, and they all say that it really feels very responsive. Uh, and that's that's fantastic. Uh, yeah, well, as I as I was saying before, the split plugin process that let us have again flash uh, back into into web, which was one of the features that people were like really complaining about for a long time. Um, yeah, there are other things that come with, together with WebKit, not, not not specific to WebKit too, but but that are like recent features. Which one of them is the accelerated compositing, which is a considerable boost in, in, in performance in, in the rendering of the web pages and, 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 and the smoothness. This means that basically all the compositing of layers or of the web page and also some CSS transformation occur all in the GPU. Uh, that has a really good impact in, in performance, especially in complex pages. Uh, WebGL, uh, I don't know if you have seen already the, the new Google Maps, uh, uh, the new Google Maps application, it's its really nice, and it runs, I will say that runs very smoothly and in Epiphany, or web. Um, yeah, there is web audio support too. Uh, ah, by the way, we, WebGL and web audio are not by default yet in Epiphany, they are under a switch because they, they are, well, I think they work pretty well, but well, they could work a bit better. I think we might flip it for the next release to make it on by default, but if you are brave, you can, you can you can switch them on in, in using the uh, deconf settings. Uh, so yeah, I'm not gonna talk much about WebKit 2. Uh, Martin, who's somewhere there, he's uh, gonna be talking on Sunday about WebKit 2. So don't miss his talk. It's, he's gonna talk a lot about how also WebKit can be used in other applications and 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 what are the best ways to uh, best practices and and more details on on what's uh, recent in the project. So now, now, let's talk about the future because I have a friend, my, my friend Messi, my friend Lionel Messi, he loves to talk about the future. And uh, he's always asking me, Claudio, what about the future? What are we gonna do in the future? The future is coming on us and yeah. So yeah, we've been doing some things, uh, not as many things as we would like because we're a very small team. But um, so one of the things is that this came up as an idea in the last uh, G WebKit GTK Hackfest in Coruña last year, and is to integrate PDF documents inside web, which basically means we just load the PDFs. And we're using LibreVins for this, and as, as of now, there are a few patches in Baxilla that sort of do m most of the things, but there are a few important features, like search, for example, missing. Uh, I think, well, I try to be optimistic and to think that maybe we get it for the next release, but uh, we'll see. Um, yeah, other thing that we are working on, and this is uh, something that comes up very frequently on vendors and, and people who want to use Epiphany as their browser because of its liveness and everything, is that they ask us, can we use it as a kiosk? We want to make installations and put uh, web there and, and let it run um, for people to browse the web in, I don't know, cafes and places like that. So one thing we've been doing is a kiosk mode. Basically means that, well, you know, you have the dedicated one browser page you cannot ex escape from, and from there you can access some information. And, and yeah, there is work in progress. Uh, I think maybe some, some of these features will, will appear soon, but I think it's gonna take a, a bit more time before we can polish it. I also think that it will be really nice if we can uh, discuss about this with the design team, because it will be great that uh, our vision in this area is aligned with theirs, so that we can go in a, in a direction that's gonna be in, Basically, a gnome like. Okay, everyone in. Yeah, um, there's a video here. I don't know how if I can post it at all with Pinpoint. No? Anyway, so yeah, there are things that need to be fixed in the application mode. For example, when, when the application mode tries. Some, some web pages try to fool you into loading a page in a different domain. Uh, 
We right now what we do is to just launch them in, in a different uh, browser process or in a regular browser process. But sometimes that doesn't really work. That sometimes that's not exactly what you want to do. For example, in the case of, of um, in the case of uh, the Google applications in general, they 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 take you to a different place for for the for login. And if if that goes to a different browser window, of course that's not what you want to do. So uh, this is this video shows a bit what what's been going on. This is a bit stalled, uh, but I, I think it. Oh, hopefully during weather we can retake this. Uh, I think GMAC, if he's here, I don't know if he's. No, uh, he had some uh, ideas about this, and yeah. But basically, what this is is basically when when you when you try to log in. Oh, is it already okay? Let's see. Ah, here he is. Yeah, <laughs> we're just talking about you. Can you believe it? <clears throat> um, yeah. So, so look at this. Uh, look at this video because you probably remember it. Uh, when you try to log in here, or when you try to access something, uh, yeah, when you try to log in, you, uh, wait a second, yeah, th there is this, what, what is this? So who did this video, it's so fast, you cannot even see it. Yeah, well basically, to be able to see when you are opening a different URL and to, to, to see that, okay, this is taking me somewhere else, do I want to continue or do I want to just open this in the browser? And um, yeah, we, we really want to get this or something along these lines in because it's it's one of the things that's stopping application mode to work really perfectly. Um, something else that we've been doing, and this is because many people tell us we don't want we cannot check Epiphany because it's a pain in the ass to to compile WebKit, <laughs> and that's understood. So we've been toying with this idea of, of, of having WebKit uh, GTK packages that you can install in Fedora and Debian and uh, maybe other major distributions so that you can just install that, build Epiphany, or even install packages of Epiphany and then give us feedback, try things, toy with the code, etc. cetera. Uh, we in, in Igalia, we have been doing this for a little while. It's, it's still, we haven't published it. I think we will do very soon. Uh, the idea is to have some kind of continuous packaging building uh, running all the time, so you can always have a rec recently enough WebKit package where you, that you can use to to test Epiphany on top. And I'm sure that, for example, John is going to be very happy about it. <laughs> um, yeah, the documentation team has been working a new user manual because we decided to remove it some time ago. It's, it was definitely too outdated for for what we had been doing in the in the project. So they have been working a new user manual. I, I committed to review it and to approve it this day, so I will do. I don't know if they are here, but uh, I haven't ignored your emails. Trust me. Um, so that's one thing. And yeah, I don't know how's the time going. Oh, it's going too fast. So we have some ideas of things that we, we, we could do for the future. And uh, of course, your comments and your uh, feedback and your participation is mostly encouraged. Um, because my friend Leonil is always complaining about the future, and, and I have to respond to him. So uh, I think I talked about this with Debarch at some point, but we never did anything about it. But it would be really nice to have a, online accounts integrated with web applications. Like for example, when you create your online account for Facebook, maybe it could also create a web app that uh, has Facebook there. So you can you can use Facebook without having to log in again in the browser. And uh, the same could be for, for uh, other services. Um, a smarter overview, as I was commenting before, there are some limitations in the way we implemented it. We're using GTK and uh, yeah, Maybe it's not so flexible as it could be, and considering that we're a web browser and we have a web engine, I think it will be clever to maybe just use HTML and JavaScript. So I think uh, one of my colleagues is, is uh, toying with this idea, and let's see where it goes. Uh, from there, I think we can, we can probably do a lot of nice things. I don't know if you have tried Chrome Beta. I was trying to install it now, but it, uh, it didn't have what I had seen in the Windows version, which is, that they, they're integrating this overview with the most frequent sites you visit together with the, uh, the search entry, like in the same page. So you, you have them together there. And I think we, can, we could do things on that uh, direction. Uh, there were some mockups from the design team that were a bit more <laughs> complex or more uh, 
uh, interesting than what we currently have, and, and I think we can we can do better in this sense. But but I think that before we move to HTML and, and JavaScript, uh, I don't I wouldn't really play much with the current code. Um, yeah, on the same line, I think the if you look at the history UI and the bookmarks UI, they really suck. Uh, we really need to change them, and I think the. Maybe even integrate them, integrating them into the in a web-based overview, they will, that will be probably the best place for it. Um, yeah, and we definitely need to improve the management of web applications because right now it's it's a bit like they're like you create them and then it's really hard if you don't know exactly where to go if you want to change them or remove them. Um, we need to fix that, and we need we need more apps. We need help, guys. You in the corner there. <laughs> So yeah, we need to do something to, to improve the management. Maybe even in the way they are, uh, maybe from the shell itself, it will be nice to be able to delete them or yeah, basically treat them like other applications if, if possible. Um, so yeah, if you have ideas, you know, we have Baxilla and we have a mailing list and I'm around here. You can try to find me and um, yeah, I think, I think we, we, we will really like uh, to do more and to do make epiphany or web uh, even better than, than than it already is. I think it's awesome, but I think we, we are really we could do much better. And the problem is that we are a really small team. <laughs> We're like two, three people working in this, and not even uh, myself. I've been like really devoting very little time, busy with other projects. So we really need more. We need we need you guys. And we need more hackers, and we need more. Uh, you, you can contribute in many ways, even if you're not a developer. You, uh, how many of you use web regularly? Oh, that, that's cool. That's why you're here, right? <laughs> OK, how many of you use a different browser regularly as your? Yeah, it's OK. I'm not going to get angry. OK. You? You? <laughs> we have to talk about this. <laughs> We'll talk it uh, around the bottle of Pechorovka. Um Yeah, at least try the web applications if you haven't. And even if for your regular browsing you use a different browser because we're not as good, because we don't have that one uh, unique and uh, useful uh, extension that your browser has that we don't, uh, at least try the web applications. Use some, some stuff there. You do your online banking. Uh, I don't know. You, you, can, you, can, you can probably use it. Give us feedback at the end of the talk <laughs> or later. Um, go to the mailing list, go to the IRC, talk to us, file bugs. Um, you can join us, hack with us, just fetch the code and, 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 and try things. Uh, I think that's it. Yeah, I don't know if it was too short, but uh, yeah, thank you. Thank you, Bernard. Thank you, everyone. Uh, that's it. And if you want to discuss things, we can do it now. Is there a mic for, uh, yeah. The guy in the front, he's been very enthusiastic during the presentation, yes. and I'm sure he wants to participate. Um, how does uh, thing, uh, the uh, web application mode work together with the new privacy goals? We, with a what? The new privacy goals. Because uh, currently, the web uh, application sometimes leaks identifying in information. Leaks what? Identifying information to um. websites. Oh, um. uh, you mean this do not track type of yeah thing? and yeah. such. Uh, so as well as cookies and um, uh, ru uh, running advertisements from external sites and so on. Yeah, I think I think that can definitely be improved. I mean, we have we have support for this do not track thing, and uh, maybe this this could be enabled in web applications. But I think. Privacy is not the major concern of, of, of web applications, although it's, it's, it, 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 it helps. But, but I think it, it, uh, it could have an orientation towards, towards, towards it. Uh, regarding cookies, well, yeah, if, 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 if we get this, I think it's, it's, it's mostly a matter of, of how we took the, the, the settings of the, of the browser so that there is as, as, as little leaking of information as possible. But yeah, if you have anything in particular in mind, you can always file a bug and, okay. and we can talk about Thank it. Thank you. Yeah. 
I like to ask, uh, what do you mean with better, or actually the desktop integration? Do you mean the look or some extra functions, I mean, uh, which uh, is missing in other browsers? Uh, well, for example, web applications, they, uh, if you, I don't know, I can. I mean, uh, it's supported, right, by other browsers, the web applications. Yeah, yeah, but uh, well, we we have we have some advantage there that they don't really have. I mean, we work with the GNOME community where we're the same in this all working in the same project. We have like uh, similar goals. I mean, we have an opportunity there. That, that's that's my point. We have an opportunity to integrate the browser better than probably in other cases. Well, yes, I understand, but I like to ask, uh, um, what do you mean exactly with the integration? Like, I don't know um, the small icons or well, just well, yeah the web application is one thing the integration with online accounts is a different thing uh notifications for example of uh, there are many things there like they, they go not only on the application level but also in the the fact that we're using this web GT, the gtk uh port of the web of webkit which of course allows to to use the same libraries and services that that the rest of nom uses so in that sense, we have an advantage there. Well, okay. <laughs> yeah, um, uh, I couldn't help but noticing the, the Epiphany mailing list uh, has been pretty quiet l lately. And if you say that, uh, well, we need help, uh, we need mockups, et cetera, et cetera, then post about it on the mailing list, uh, I would say. Because, uh, I, f I follow the list, but <laughs> I yeah, yeah, I know. anything like that. Yeah, I've been I've been trying to keep more. Uh, it's just yeah, personally I've been like really <laughs> uh, entangled in many things, so that's why lately it's been difficult. But but um, yeah, you're right. We should probably do better on that front. And well, but time is limited, and that's I think the main constraint, not motivation to do or to. Uh, are there any plans to work with the new uh, high DPI scaling? Because you'll notice if you run it with JH build and high DPI, mm -hmm. while the application widgets look fantastic, the actual content rendered within the pane is a bit fuzzy. And so I think we need to apply the same sort of stuff down into WebKit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not, uh, I think that's something probably WebKit related. Uh, I, I don't really know that yeah I think Martin knows better yeah do you want to make any <laughs> yeah yeah so you're gonna address this probably in the in your talk or yeah yeah I think it's something that Martin will uh, so uh, you have uh, told about uh, the reaction to plugin uh, crashes uh, but how about the situation when a plugin just uh, eats 100% of the CPU, uh, drains battery, and so on? Is there are there any plans to uh, fight that? To 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 what? To fight the situation uh, when a browser plugin, for example, a Flash-based app, uh, eats 100% uh, of the CPU. The page is uh, responsive, but the battery is uh, yeah, drained. Yeah, I understand. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, I think now, because of the split model of 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 of, of processes, this is much better. But uh, we definitely need better you better uh, management of of those things. For example, so I think other browsers have tools to let you see what the bro what the plugins are doing, and maybe there we could do better. And yeah. That's definitely something to, to look into. Yeah. Might be a silly question, but is there any push to unify JavaScript engines within GNOME? Sorry? Is there any push to unify JavaScript engines oh. within GNOME? I don't really have comments on that. <laughs> no, I don't really know. No, I cannot tell you. Uh, I wouldn't say so, but yeah, you know, WebKit is just going in one direction, using one, and I can. 
I don't, I don't know if it's, it would be useful for us in order to work with upstream to, to use a custom one, different one that WebKit itself is using. So I don't know. On the other end, I cannot comment on what uh, the shell team is really doing <laughs> in there. So um, sorry if you if you said this and I, I missed it. I'm, I apologize. But uh, when it comes to the web application mode, do you support packaged apps? Uh, not at the moment, but there are there are. Yeah, I, I forgot to mention that that it's it's one of the experiments that we have. Uh, there is a in one bug report. There is a couple of patches that let you install applications from uh, this Chrome App Store or whatever it's called, and I think right. then for Firefox one. So. Yeah, I think that there are some things that don't work well. And on the other hand, I think there are some concerns with regards to how legal is to even do that. If right. Do, do you support, like, uh, I know a lot of those things that are focused on, on mobile, like Firefox OS, are really more focused on the device API things. I wonder if there's, do you mm. care about any of that, or is there enough to worry about? Oh. Uh, um. I think we're really focusing the desktop now, so yeah. All right, cool. And I think that's it, yeah. Well, thank you. Enjoy the conference. <laughs> <laughs>